Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back on GT Sport and we're back with the FIA Manufacturers Round Number 2 at Fuji in Group 3. So this was an extremely high rated lobby again, 3k plus lobby. Starting in pole position, Tijanu with an absolutely amazing lap. I think it was a 36.4 for pole position. Then from P3 all the way down to I think it was P12 or something like that, there was two tenths of a second separating P3 to P12. Um, incredibly close qualifying you can see all the way through the grid, grid very high ranked drivers this was an extremely hard lobby in p8 i managed to do quite a reasonable lap it wasn't perfect again didn't nail the lap but it was a good enough lap to put myself in p8 against some of the um, best drivers on gt sport and um, world finest etc all the way through the grid a few drivers that didn't quite hook their lap up a little bit further down um, the grid order. I think some, one of the TRL drivers um, that you normally expect him to be really high up there. You can see just in the background there, something from P13, just behind Pikmin, um, TRL Tissue, Tissue, we call him. I, I don't know if I say it right. I don't know what his correct correct pronunciation is but starting from p13 didn't quite hook his lap up i did expect him to be high i knew he would be coming through the field with extremely fast race pace as the race progressed but you see all the way through the grid um high rated drive you see tx3 adam down in p17 in the first race we messed our qualifying up we started right at the back because we um hit the apex of turn two pretty much spot on but we hit the bollard that had been knocked over onto the track and it just spun the car out and we just didn't get a lap in so in this race starting from p8 um much better this time and just trying to keep it side now one thing we're gonna have to be really cautious of during this race was the tire wear the nsx was really destroying the rear left tire so extreme that even though i was running five to the front bias i was gonna have to be really cautious all the way through the race and just try and look after it as much as possible as you see picking up the slipstream straight away from the start of the race and just trying to stay with that ft1 no real point in making a dive down the inside i was just looking for the braking markers just so i don't miss um, the braking and go straight into the back of another car because that's not what you want to do in a lobby like this as we see everyone getting through turn one pretty much perfectly no real incidents all the way through the back of the grid everyone goes through turn one cleanly and with respect which is what we like to see in these top split lobbies as now i'm just trying to hook this car up through these corners at the moment the grip is really good obviously we've got you know we've only done half lap so the grip's there and we're able to take quite a lot of speed even though we're right behind rick in that ft1 through the corners we've got really good grip at this stage of the race the nsx with fresh tires is actually a really nice car it's just when that tire wear kicks in it starts getting a little bit hard to put the power down on the rear tires as we work our way into the chicane you see it looks like there's a car going for a move on the inside there that's going to cause everyone to break a little bit early and it all bunches up again as we've also got the williams driver right behind ourselves putting a lot of pressure on so i'm in a situation now where i need to make sure i keep picking up the slipstream from rick in front which at this moment isn't really an issue because the rear tire life is really good we haven't suffered any obviously we've only done one lap it is on time 17 which is extremely strong considering we're on we were on the racing soft tyres and time 17 tyre wear is, is a bit ridiculous if I'm brutally honest. A lot of people are complaining about it. Pad players are suffering. It, it, I don't understand what Polyphony's, um, why they're doing it, but it is really silly as we now pick up the slipstream from Rick. We got a reasonably good exit from that corner. I don't think he quite hooked it up as he seems to lose a little bit of a slipstream from the car in front, but one of the problems was, was the cars in front were really fast cars so when they got the slipstream they were basically impossible to stay in their slipstream as you see there we make that move on rick on the inside while the grips there we were able to be quite competitive and i had reasonably good speed when the tires had the grip it's just when they started to die the grip fell off and the nsx really did suffer as we go through turn two trying to make sure we don't run too far wide and picking up a penalty there that was one spot that you could quite easily pick up a penalty in this race as I now make my way through the long right hand corner, the corner that really does take a lot of tyre wear out, that left front tyre, it totally destroys the left front and obviously on back on the power on that left hander puts a little bit of um, stress on the rear right, but not too much, that's not really the tyre that's going to be under pressure in this race, it's all about that rear left hand tyre, it really does suffer as we come to the chicane again and you can see we've got a bit of a gap in front of us, I really tried to push on this lap to see if I could get back into the slipstream of that Mercedes it was really important if I could pick up the slipstream we might be able to stay with these cars 
for the remainder of this first stint. Obviously the tyre wear would be an issue with some of the cars up ahead, like the Mercedes much better on its tyres. So I was really pushing through there, you can see the rear nearly stepping out there as I put on the power. But you can see I'm just tantalisingly close to getting that slipstream off um, Carr Williams in front of us. But just not close enough, we're just outside the slipstream range. So I decided to go over to the right hand side of the track to try and um, limit the chance of Rick getting too much of a slipstream. But maybe I should have just stayed to the left and let him pick up the slipstream. And if he gets past us, then use his slipstream again. But um, during the race, I was trying to, I, I actually thought that the tyres were going to last and we might be able to get a bit closer to the Mercedes on the next lap. However, you can see the advantage they get from all being within each other's slipstream and picking up the double draft from each other. And they're quite fast cars in that group anyway. So the NSX really didn't have much chance of getting too close at the end of that straight. And you can see I've actually lost out by possibly half a second maybe more just on that straight because of not being in the slipstream so that shows you the importance of getting in the slipstream with the car in front and now i can start feeling the tire wear kicking in in this race you, you can see on the um tire wear chart the rear left hand tire is starting to suffer a little bit with its tires it's not terrible but we've only done two and a bit laps and it's starting to look a little bit dodgy you can see we've got 11 laps in this race so the first stint was going to be the five laps in pretty much everyone was going to do it as we go to the replay camera just look how close this racing is the top you can see from um Tigney in p2 all the way down to p i think it was p10 or 11 and um, all within one footage of a replay camera that's how close this racing is on lap three and it really is gonna it does show you the the quality of the drivers in these top foot races and how close it is and how important it is to not make any mistakes you can see so far in this race we're starting to lose that slipstream now from we, we're starting to lose it and increase the gap to um carl williams in front of us he's managing to make that gap a little bit bigger as the tire wears kicking in and also they've got the advantage of them cars in front of all being within within each other's slipstream so they're able to crawl back during the straights when they're they lose a bit of ground but for myself and Rick behind, we're out of that slipstream drafting range to, to be able to gain on them cars in front of us. I decided to just let Rick go at this point. I knew the FT1 would have much better tyres than what I could would have in the NSX. So I decided to let Rick go and see if he could help pull me along a bit um, while I'm starting to suffer with these tyres. Now we're on lap four and the NSX is starting to feel that rear left-hand tyre wear kicking in. So we're going to let Rick go and just try and hang in and see if we can get dragged along all the way to the pit stop phase but we've obviously got another ft1 behind us which is going to have much better tires than the car i'm in it's it's not more the front tires, it's the rear grip they have so much better on traction you'll see during the traction zones they're able to get on the, the power so much earlier now um, i'm having to be really cautious and just try and look after these tires and this is why i didn't want to battle rick too much at that stage i felt like if i was going to battle we'd probably both lose too much time so i decided to just let him go and see if he can help me out in terms of keeping my race pace that little bit better as we're just about staying in the slipstream range at this point this is where it's really hard to um, stay close to the car in front when you've got that loss of aero very close to the car in front you just get a little bit less grip as you see he's clearly got more pace at this point you can see he's actually closing in on that mercedes in front of him and at the moment we're just within that slipstream range as we've got the driver behind us the williams driver putting us under a lot of pressure i decided to try and get on the power nice and earlier but you can see i'm suffering with rear grip as, as you can see Rick there nearly losing control of his car in the FT1 on the exit there. Really, he was obviously stamping on the power to see if he could get as close as possible to that Mercedes in front. However, he just probably just missed out on the slipstream ranges. Now, I'm going to let um, the Williams driver in the other FT1 just go up on the inside. Again, there's no point fighting that. I decided my tyres are shot. If I fight this too much, we're going to let other cars further down the grid catch us up. And I didn't want to lose a top 10 position in this race because I didn't really fancy racing the 11 p.m. race. It's a little bit late for me. I'd rather just get my result and then move on to the next round. We're just doing this, for, like I say, we're not being ultra competitive with this. We just want to be having fun with the best drivers in the game. And, you know, Well, my opinion, they're the best drivers in the game. As we go through the long right-hand corner, trying to hold the tight line there but it's really struggling now at this point you can see the, the left hand side of the car it's the side that's really struggling with the tire wear it's just got very limited grip when getting on the power the rear left is really starting to fade away and the front left is really dying as well the front left is dying because i had to put the brake bias to minus five so we had to go all the way to the front for the brake bias to try and save the rear tires as much as possible and i'm trying to drive this cautiously but still aggressively at the same time because i don't want to lose too much ground as we've now got tg tanker a driver another driver known for quite aggressive moves 
right behind me. Um, we've had some incidents in the past where he's done some really aggressive moves and caused incidents in these FIA races. Um, in FIA races, I tend to be quite cautious with my moves um, because I don't like to obviously ruin other people's races. But Tenka is known to be quite aggressive. I'm not saying it's bad driving, he's just known to be very aggressive. We've come to the pit stop phase now. We're going to really try and maximize our pit entry. You can see we're only a few seconds behind the lead group of cars, and then there's a bit of a gap behind myself and Tenka with the next group of cars as we go in the pit lane and we really hook that pit lane off um, and really accept, took as much speed as possibly we put basically possibly could all the way into bits as we see some drivers on the medium size that really wasn't the way to go we worked that one out when we um, did a practice race the mediums just didn't seem to have the overall grip and they still faded off and we've actually managed to jump back past the Williams driver somehow in the pit entry I think we might have carried a bit more speed on the entry and we've got that um, unique pit stop that sometimes your driver gets where you end up being a second and a half faster than anyone else. It's a real strange one. It's got to be something to do with the speed you carry into the pits, I believe. Um, but either way, we, we gain that position back somehow. And now we're back behind Rick. I'm very close to the battle for um, P3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8, as you can see there. Everyone's in each other's slipstream range. And no driver, this is the amazing thing about these top split races. Not one single driver has really made a mistake up ahead of us. No penalties, no mistakes, no sliding, no missing their braking. It's just all perfect driving. Even with this time 17 multiplier and racing soft tyres, not one driver in the top 10 really has made an error. Even top 11 um, with TG Tanker right behind us. Um, excellent driving throughout the grid, and it's great to see. As you see, side by side action there with two cars, as it looks like. Um, there's a car there that hasn't pitted yet p7 is really struggling on tires and this is going to affect me because i wanted to stay in rick's slipstream range and we're going to try and go on the inside there but he cuts that off and this is awkward he loses the rear of the car right in front of me as i'm getting on the power i've obviously got the fresh tires and more grip decided to throw it up the inside and try and take an early apex to see if we could just about stay in rick's slipstream range and we just about manage that and so the williams driver also gets through behind us without incident so that was a little bit of a hairy moment Obviously where the TX3 driver had not pitted yet. He's going to go in the pits now and we're staying out. And we just about kept ourselves in the slipstream range. But you can see myself and Rick actually lost out a little bit on that incident with that um, back marker. The gap increased a bit from P6 to P7 where they managed to get through him in a little bit of a better position without losing too much time. But we lost a little bit of time. But luckily for myself, I was able to stay in Rick's slipstream and he was able to just pull me back in range of him and now we're just going to try and hold on now one thing we're going to have to be very cautious about is Rick runs very 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 wide out of that corner I did expect at that point that he might pick up a penalty but somehow he managed to get away with that but yeah we're going to need to look after the tyres on this stint although it is hard because we've got lower fuel the car feels good at this stage I wanted to push because I didn't want to drop back too much I wanted to keep within this battle for the p5 6 7 8 etc because if one car makes a mistake or two cars pick up a penalty again just look how close this racing is we are on lap six now of this race and you can see that the racing is it's just so sorry lap seven we're on now and from p2 to down to p10 we're all in one replay footage um, camera there that's insane you know for this distance into a race with tire wear on high exaggerated rate that it's on to see the consistency in these drivers in the top 10 is really impressive and I think um, credit to everyone in this top set race for the how we all drove I think at this point everyone was driving really clean you can see there the Williams driver had a little look up the inside I tried to take a slightly different line to give myself better exit speed to see if I could get back in Rick's slipstream which we just about managed to do you can see I'm just picking it up enough now to gain back on Rick as he's not in the slipstream of the cars in front so that's helping me out. I'm going to have to go a little bit defensive here, which is going to lose us a little bit of time. You can see the Williams driver goes down the left-hand side. He's going to try and break late and go around the outside. I'm going to hold the inside. The grip's there for me to do that and get on the power nice and early. And the Williams driver comes over. I don't think he realised I was there. He comes over in a little tap on the rear, but no harm done as we go into the braking for 10 -2. And again, I'm going to have to be very cautious because he's right on my left-hand side. And he's just about... Um, doesn't make any contact there and we get through that corner but look at the difference that that little bit of battling has made this is why I didn't want to battle with cars too much because one you use up tyre life and you also lose a lot of time we've lost probably about half a second to a second on the battle for P7 and 6 etc and now we're just we're going to end up dropping further back when the tyre wear kicks in because we've not got that slipstream 
to be able to drag us along so we're going to be very vulnerable in certain areas of the track now as we try and hook that apex up and get on the power nice and early and trying to be smooth as well as aggressive it's such a delicate balance with these races with such high tire rate especially when on the racing softs you want to be aggressive on the throttle but it's just such a risk with time 17 on every little slide every little wheel spin just takes so much life out the tires we run a little bit wide there trying to ex trying to really widen this line and limit the steering angle put in through the corner so that when we get on the throttle it doesn't risk of the twitchy rear and losing that rear or spinning the rears up slightly but you can see there we did it reasonably well we got a better exit than the williams driver behind however he's picking up that slipstream i'm not in the slipstream range of ricky in front of me and he's going to be able to go for a move and i actually decided at this point do i fight this i thought i'm going to try and fight it for one more lap and see how we get along but you can see he's going to try and go around the outside he's going to break much later than i can and he just so much more grip he's just able to go around the outside as the nsx is struggling a little bit now i managed to get reasonable exit but again can't manage to get the undercut there back onto the williams driver so decided to just tuck in behind him and again try and use his slipstream to try and help myself defend against some of these cars that are behind with better tire wear you can see that mazda i think that's a mazda behind which is a very good car um, in race conditions because of its tire wear so i was a little bit worried about that car coming through the grid as you can also see the trl driver really pushing there you could see the car the way it was behaving he's really pushing and trying to get back onto this battle there's a lot of dust being kicked up there is everyone using maximum track limits as they come out of that corner you can just sit, still see though look how close this racing is the battle up front was not too far ahead of us as 10 car the little look up on the inside they decided to close that door no way i was going to let that happen and get back on the power and try and stay within the williams driver's slipstream down the straight but again i was starting to get a little bit worried about tanker behind because he's going to be in a much better car for tire wear which we all know about the attends is really good especially on soft tires the attends is known for being really fast on soft tires so i was a bit worried about how aggressive he was going to be because like i said earlier in this video he is known to be quite an aggressive driver so luckily there i managed to get the slipstream off the williams driver in front just about picking it up which is going to help me out down this straight in terms of defending against that attenza although i wasn't sure how fast the attenza would be in a straight line but it seemed to have slightly better speed than the nsx but also on top of that he's got a, probably a stronger slipstream than i'm picking up and i just go for the braking and look in the rear he just dies from so far back but i seen it come in let the door open and then just tuck back underneath him and get that move back past and then keep that position i could see i kind of predicted he was going to make that move i know what type of driver he is so i deliberately stayed wide i could see him in the mirror going for the move but now we're really starting to suffer with the tires run a little bit wide there as we go to chuck it in he sees an opportunity and gives us a little nudge there pushes us out the way a little bit maybe a little bit too aggressive but reasonably fair but i decided to fight this one back late breaking into the apex of the corner tiny bit of contact again but british touring car style racing there and we get ourselves back into pa i think that was a fair move we were side by side in the apex a tiny bit of contact but not, nothing too major as he's still fighting now behind us and now we've got the trl driver going for a move on the inside inside right behind us and able to make that move as i break a little bit late really starting to soften with the tie wear. just look at my tie wear at this stage of the race the front left is dead the rear left is dead and we've got a novel lap to go so i decided just past these corners now before we start the final lap i was going to put the traction control to level one just to try and give myself some sort of extra bit of grip as i get on the powers i decided also at this point i could see the trl driver had much more grip i decided to let him go on the inside and then tuck up behind him to defend against tanker because i felt like if i tried to fight um the trl driver i was possibly going to lose two places because my tires were gone we didn't have any grip had to have track control on level one but now i've got the slipstream to defend against the tanker so i was trying to let trl driver know i wasn't going to overtake him i was flashing him here saying go to the left just don't worry about me too much just give yourself a good line through this corner but then Tenke completely misses the break and um, tries to dive off the inside. And as you can see there, again, too aggressive, runs off wide. And myself and the TRR driver saw it come in, breaks early, tucked in behind. And we get back past him there. As, again, little, just too aggressive, not really thinking about the consequences. He makes a mistake and he loses out more positions. And he actually lost out to P10 as well as Matthew gets back past Tenke. And now... I've just got to try and hold on. I think we actually increased the traction control to level two for the last sector because if you look at my rear left, it is struggling for grip. We've got nothing left on that tire and the front left is dying. 
and this is really going to affect our braking so I decided now there's no point me fighting the TRL driver in front because my, my tyres are dead, they're shot, they've got nothing left in them, I just need to hold on now and see if I can hold on to this P9 which in this lobby of the quality of drivers that are in, that are in this race it wouldn't be a bad position as you can see even the TRL driver starting to suffer a bit there um, but probably not got the traction control on but I just put it on just for the safety measure I didn't want to spin out on these last few corners as these corners are all about traction so if your tyre's gone it is risky when getting on the power as you see especially this left hand corner it tends to run the risk of losing control there but with that traction control on no risk of that as we go through this final corner and just trying to get on the power as you see you can see the track control kicking in again you can see the revs stopping themselves just so we don't spin out and we go over the straight uh, onto the straight down past the straight start finishing line and we've come home with a reasonably solid p9 now not a massive amount of points for that position which is a little bit disappointing because in the quality of field there you would think we we deserve more points than what we get but we get 1700 points which is not great when you consider that the splits i think split four and five there was a driver in split four and five that i've noticed um they are just over 50k managed to pick up over 2000 points which shows you the issue with this system at the moment um it is a little bit strange but again i don't think nothing's going to happen about this for a long time i think they will do something soon but i don't think it'll happen right away as um it probably takes quite a lot of um, changes within the scoring structure. And I, my guess is it might happen for the next season. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. I thoroughly enjoyed that race. Racing there, um, really clean drive and amazing to see that not one single error, except for um, Tenka with the dodgy moves. And I think Matthew made a little mistake in front of us as well and lost that position. But one driver in the top 10 making an error in that race with such high tyre rate um, really shows you the quality of driving. But reasonable result picking up p9 we lost one place which i kind of expected in the nsx with the sub with the car suffering with the extreme tire wear that it was um reasonably happy with that anyway hope you enjoyed it make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you did also make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed and make sure you click that notification button so you don't miss any future videos thanks again for watching everyone